Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This has been a big story in the news this week. Climate models have been impressively accurate for decades, study finds. This is the exact opposite of reality. In this video, I'm going to show you what's wrong with this story and why. In June of 1988, a climate modeler from NASA named James Hansen testified before Congress about the greenhouse effect. He started the global warming scare that day and said he was 99% certain. I like this paragraph in the article. His comment, which ushered in a summer of drought, forest fires, and heat waves, sparked a media blitz that soon made the greenhouse effect the most talked about, invisible, global calamity since the ozone hole. The key word there being invisible. Hansen told the Congressional Subcommittee in June that the summer's hot, dry conditions were an example of things to come. If the summer outlook were a die with six faces, the period between 1950 and 1979 would have had two faces representing a hot year, two representing a normal year, and two a cold year, the NASA team wrote. By the 1990s, that die will be loaded, with three or four faces coming up hot when it's rolled, the researchers concluded. That means the chances of any particular summer being hotter than normal would top 50%, compared with the 33% chance of the past. Hansen told Congress that there were going to be lots of hot summers in the United States starting in the 1990s, and we were also going to be having an increase in drought. Now let's take a look at how he did. This is a graph of U.S. summer temperatures from 1895 until the present. The hottest summers in the United States were during the 1930s and during the 1950s. And the last really hot summer we had was the year when Hansen gave his testimony to Congress. Since then, summers have been quite cool. And the 1990s had some of the coolest summers on record in the United States. This graph of the percent of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit in the United States shows something very similar. Hansen's testimony was given during the last really hot summer and four years later was actually the coolest summer on record in the United States. And this is the graph of U.S. precipitation from NOAA. U.S. precipitation has been increasing since the 19th century, and three of the five wettest years in U.S. history have occurred in the last five years. The U.S. got very wet right after Hansen gave his testimony, and the exact opposite of what he predicted, the 1990s was one of the wettest decades on record. Hansen, the climate modeler, not only got everything wrong with his forecasts, but he got them exactly backwards. What this headline should read is, climate models have been impressively wrong for decades. Now let's look at the origin of this fake news. The night before Hansen gave his testimony to Congress in 1988, him and Colorado Senator Tim Wirth went in and sabotaged the air conditioner. This is an interview which Senator Tim Worth gave to PBS. We called the Weather Bureau and found out what historically was the hottest day of the summer. Well, it was June 6th or June 9th or whatever it was, so we scheduled the hearing that day and bingo, it was the hottest day on record in Washington or close to it. It was stiflingly hot that summer. At the same time, you had this drought all across the country, so the linkage between the Hansen hearing and the drought became very intense. What we did was went in the night before and opened all the windows, I will admit, right, so that the air conditioning wasn't working inside the room, and so when the, when the hearing occurred, there was not only bliss, which is television cameras and double figures, but it was really hot. So Hansen's giving this testimony, you've got these television cameras back there heating up the room, and the air conditioning in the room didn't appear to work. So it was sort of a perfect collection of events that happened that day with the wonderful Jim Hansen who was wiping his brow at the witness table and giving this remarkable testimony. This should give you a good hint as to what's going on. NASA's James Hansen has shown a willingness to cheat since day one. Global warming was always about propaganda more than science. Hansen actually gave his testimony on June 22nd and Tim Worth was right. That was by far the hottest June 22nd on record in the United States. Now we're going to fast forward 11 years to a paper which James Hansen wrote in 1999. Hansen was very concerned that the United States was not warming, and in fact it had been cooling since the 1930s. The United States is very important because the vast majority of high quality long-term stations around the world are located in the United States. 
This map from NOAA shows the stations where they have daily temperature data prior to the year 1920. There are lots of stations in the United States, a fair amount in Western Europe, some in Australia, but for the rest of the world there's almost none. The fact that there's so little long-term daily temperature data around the world makes the U.S. temperature record extremely important. This is what Hansen's U.S. temperature graph looked like in 1999. 1934 was by far the hottest year, and 1998 was more than half a degree Celsius cooler. Hansen was very concerned about this long-term cooling trend, so he did what climate modelers always do. He changed the data. In the current version of the NASA temperature graph, 1998 is now warmer than 1934. I'm going to flip back and forth a few times to see how the data has been changed. 1999 version, 2019 version, 1999 version, cooling, 2019 version, warming. This is how climate modelers make their forecasts appear accurate. They simply change the data to make the data match their forecast. And Hansen did a very similar thing with global temperatures. The blue line represents the version of global temperatures which NASA published in the year 2000. It showed about half a degree warming since the start of records. And in red we can see the current version of the same graph. NASA now shows more than one degree Celsius warming prior to the year 2000. They more than doubled warming before the year 2000 by altering and hiding data. When I show them this information, climate alarmists always tell me, that's just conspiracy theory. But everything I'm showing you is straight off the NASA website. The reason that this nonsense is able to occur is because there's a fundamental problem in the way climate science is structured. Imagine you had a team where this guy was the quarterback, and the same guy was also the coach, and he was also the referee and scorekeeper. Instead of having a football game, you would be having a choreographed event with a guaranteed outcome. Nobody would put up with that sort of nonsense in sports or anything else, so why do we put up with it with climate science? When you have the same guy doing the climate modeling, the forecasting, and analyzing the results, there's never going to be any doubt about the outcome. Now let's look at how James Hansen actually did with his forecast. In 1988, Hansen published his very famous climate model forecast. He made calculations for three different greenhouse gas scenarios. Scenario A is what he called business as usual. That meant we did nothing to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. Scenario B assumed that we continued to produce greenhouse gas emissions, but the amount of them didn't increase over time. And Scenario C drastically reduced greenhouse gas emissions between 1990 and 2000, such that the greenhouse climate forcing ceased to increase after the year 2000. Scenario C implied that the amount of greenhouse gas in the atmosphere didn't increase after the year 2000, which essentially meant that we stopped using fossil fuels. And this was the graph of Hansen's climate model forecast based on the three scenarios. Scenario A on top, Scenario B in the middle, and Scenario C on the bottom. Now let's compare Hansen's forecast to what satellite show actually happened. The red line shows satellite lower troposphere temperatures from the University of Alabama in Huntsville. Since Hansen made his forecast, lower troposphere temperatures have closely tracked Scenario C which, if you remember, meant that we stopped using fossil fuels after the year 2000. Hansen expected temperatures to rise like this in his business-as-usual scenario, but instead what we've seen is temperatures have risen about as fast as if we'd stopped using fossil fuels 20 years ago. It's difficult to imagine how Hansen could possibly have been more wrong with his forecast. Remember that the greenhouse effect occurs in the troposphere, and that's where we should be measuring temperatures not in parking lots on the ground. The other lower troposphere satellite temperature data set is from remote sensing systems. Carl Mears at Remote Sensing Systems published this graph two years ago comparing climate model forecasts in yellow with actual measure temperatures in blue. Mears wrote, Note that after 1998, the observations are likely to be below the simulated values indicating that the simulation as a whole are predicting too much warming. A few years ago, Ted Cruz used one of Carl Mears' graphs in a Senate hearing, and after that, Carl Mears came under tremendous pressure from the climate mafia to alter his graph. On March 27, 2015, I made the following prediction. 
Look for the satellite data to be adjusted to bring it into compliance with the fully fraudulent surface temperatures. The Guardian is now working to discredit UAH, so it seems likely that remote sensing systems will soon be making big changes to match the needs of the climate mafia. Bookmark this post. And in that March 2015 post, I included this animation which showed what I thought they would do. They would cool the past and warm the present. And that's exactly what happened. Under pressure, Carl Mears at Remote Sensing Systems changed the data. This is what his current graph of climate model forecasts in yellow versus actual measured temperatures in black looks like. He now says there's a small discrepancy between the model predictions and the satellite observations. Once again, this is just propaganda. Even with his altered data, he's at the bottom end of the climate model forecast, indicating that the models are not working very well. There was only a brief spike during the 2016 El Nino when temperatures got up well into the climate model range. In this graph, I've superimposed Mir's current version on top of his version from two years ago, and you can see exactly what he did. The current version is the black line, and the previous version is the blue band. What Mears did was he simply moved the temperatures up to the upper end of the error band, and he completely eliminated the blue error band from his diagram. This is very poor scientific practice and indicates how powerful the climate mafia is at getting people to alter data. The verification of climate models needs to be done by people who are completely independent of the modelers themselves. And as we can see very clearly, that's not the case. James Hansen is no longer in charge of temperatures at NASA, but he's been replaced by yet another climate modeler. Having climate modelers evaluate their own work is a completely corrupt process. We wouldn't put up with it in anything else other than climate science. The existence of this corrupt inbred process gives us a guaranteed result. James Hansen is no longer at NASA, but he's now out telling the world that the end is near. The climate is doing just fine, but hopefully the end is near for this corrupt process in climate science. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.